Now, dear friends, in the portion of Scripture which we have been reading this morning, in the ninth chapter of Isaiah, we saw in the sixth verse, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Now we'll pause there. So we are given here his name. His name shall be called Wonderful. You know, when I was traveling one day from London to Glasgow, uh, there was on the train certain young fellows, and one of them probably was a journalist of some sort. And the craze at that time was to take the great out of Great Britain. Oh, we'll take the great out of Great Britain. We have been colonizing people, and so on and so forth. The colonies, of course, and the age of colonization was a fact of history. It was a phase when nations wanted a bigger marketplace, just like today. People are squabbling over the marketplaces. Anyway, when Britain ruled half the globe, all that some of those English boys could think of was how to take the great out of Great Britain. So they must find all the flaws of course, when you conquer another land, there will be always certain flaws and even atrocities if you come to some nations. However, I said, listen, I want you to look at the other side of the picture. That's not the whole picture. The subcontinent of India was in little bits and pieces, ruled by many Rajas and Maharajas. And to bring them all into a wholeness was no easy job. To create a communication system against the prejudices of the people at one point, you see, in 1857, the part of the revolt, part of the mutiny, as it was called, was because the railway lines were said to bind Mother India. The railway lines are binding Mother India. And so on and so forth. I said, look, you need to know the other side of the picture. And to give that nation a just judicial system. And so on and so forth. Now, we see today a, a world which is becoming almost ungovernable. 
And in the midst of this, we are celebrating Christmas. His name shall be called Wonderful. Now, shall we also try to remove the wonder out of this wonderful name? Is that our goal in life? You know, we have various goals. And of course, and a life passes so quickly. And some of these goals are so miserably mean goals. You see, I wanted to be a great sportsman. But how long does sports stay? One of the greatest cricket players, an Australian player, he was asked later, after he had retired, and what about cricket? Oh, I never go to watch a game. You know, there are some people who say, oh, my life is not just a game. I want something more of life. And we can see more and more how people are just using games and sports just for money and cheating and drugs. That's not sport. It is just a, a kind of system of deceit brought into the realm of sport. So we see the noblest things, you know, after all competition on a game's field is good. It helps you to be physically fit and so on and so forth. But if I had only gone after my games, I would have lost my life work. I would have lost the wonderful Jesus. The wonder of the wonderful Jesus. See, we are taking that wonder out of our wonderful Lord. Practically, we have succeeded in that. We have made him a Sunday morning God who for a little while we must sit like this and look at all the foolish people who think they are bored. Bored of what? Bored of the wonderful? A woman was traveling with me and said, I'm going to India. Oh, I said, what are you going to do there? Oh, she says, I go every year. Oh, really? And what do you do? Oh, I sit before the Taj Mahal and wonder at the sight. And every year I spend some days like that. All right. After all, it is a monument raised in the memory of a wife by an emperor. Of course, it is a noble monument and a very beautiful structure. And all right, I saw it once. I can't say I sat and gazed and gazed and gazed on it. No, it's a beautiful structure. And I love ar architecture. And uh, as I looked on that wonderful site, the, you know, behind a great structure, there's a great mind. That you must not forget. All right. But the wonder of a mausoleum, which is the Taj Mahal, 
has not been lost upon this world. There are so many sites that are to be found in so many nations. But those people say, this is wonderful. All right, what is coming out of our hearts? Something to show the wonder of our wonderful Lord? Or are we only going to show a kind of dead Christianity? A religion? You know, I want a certificate to go to heaven, you know. So I, I'm looking for a certificate. I'm looking for a boarding pass to get to heaven. Is that all? Isn't there something wonderful in this wonderful Savior? You know, friends, if you turn to the 28th chapter of Isaiah, you will see the last verse, please. 28th chapter of Isaiah. The Bible says, This also cometh forth from the Lord of hosts, which is wonderful in counsel and excellent in working. Wonderful. You see, I was talking about the thought, the mind behind something which is wonderful. The architect behind it, the mind of the architect. So our Lord is wonderful in his thinking, in his counsel for you. We don't expect anything wonderful to come. Therefore, we don't go to him. Suppose I asked you, why don't you go to your bank and draw that thousand dollars which you need? Maybe you will turn around and say, I don't have a thousand dollars in the bank. So I, there's no point in my going there. You see, that's the problem. We have not in the first place made Jesus our very own. It's just an intellectual thing. It is not the fullness of Jesus. It's not the beauty of Jesus. It's not the perfections of our Lord that we seek. We just want to pass, you know, pass by. Kind of patron-like attitude. I want to be a patron of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus requires no patron, sir. What? And our some fellows may even imagine, you know, this work cannot get on without me. I give a million dollars. Sir, what happens when you die? What happens when your bank collapses? Does Jesus die? No. See, look at the way we, our attitudes are wrong. Our perceptions are wrong. We go, so suppose I, Go, I'm admitted. You know, the closest I got to Buckingham Palace is the gates. <laughs> of course, how would I go, go gate crashing? That won't be possible. <laughs> well, with the mounted soldiers there, that's not possible. Anyway, but, just think of that. Suppose I did get an admission into an audition or a, an audience with the Queen of England. 
and said to her, Ma'am, I want a brown penny. <laughs> they used to call their pennies brown pennies, you know. What would anybody think of me? Here's a madman. Get him out of the place to the place where he belongs. So we go to the Lord Jesus Christ and ask him for a penny. And we say, your name is wonderful, isn't it? But all I ask is, give me a penny. Give me some material thing or some other thing. Lord, I want wholeness. I want to behold you as you are. Not just a part of you, a shade, a shadow of yourself. Or some, some kind of made-up figure. You know, some of our speculations about religion can be so wrong. You know, if you get into the jungle of theology, at the end of it, end of the course, you might come out as an almost mental case. Afraid to say this, afraid to say that, you hardly know where you stand. And you put a man like that in the pulpit, all he knows about Jesus Christ is just a second-hand distant, maybe even an imaginary figure, as far as he is concerned. Because it is only when you say, what my hands have handled, what my eyes have seen, That do I declare unto you. You see, folks, our very manner and pattern of life today. You see, we look into the paper. We see, oh, I can gain a penny there, a penny here. And, of course, I'm not referring to those who are in great financial want. To be frugal is good. I believe in being frugal and careful. But, you see, you can spend your whole day on such things. Running here, running there. Uh, just to save a few pennies, of course. There is a time when you don't have money and you must be careful. But we give so much thought and time to these pennies. But to Jesus, suppose you gave that time to studying. Instead of studying the coupons, you gave that time to studying the Word of God, the riches and the power that comes from God's Holy Word. You know, you, your quality of life will be different. Your thoughts will be different. You see, my dear friends, after all, when I declare the Lord Jesus Christ I can't help but feel, ah, alas, I'm not like Jesus. I'm not like Jesus. What a failure. It's a terrible failure. I wear the name of Jesus, but I proclaim Jesus. 
but I'm not like Jesus. There's, there's something incongruent there, something that does not jibe. So, we see a situation where we do not see the wonder of the mind of Jesus seeking to direct us, seeking. You know, one of the things that does happen in the world in which we live today, we seem to have a profound, what shall I say, a misplaced, Self-evaluation, which is just too high. I'll do my thing. I know how to live. You can see little brats telling you, Oh, yes, I know how to live. I don't need to be told. All right, that's an attitude. It comes to little children, and it seems to grow as we grow up, till we become a people who hate instruction. You know what the Bible says about that? If you turn to Isaiah, uh, to Psalm 50, please. Seventeenth verse, seeing thou hatest instruction, and casteth my words behind you. We should never come to the place where we don't want correction. You see, am I perfect? Don't I need correction? Do, do, if I correct myself, do, won't I make a better man of myself? Of course. Thou hatest in instruction, and casteth my words behind you. So what does God say? 21st verse. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Oh, don't misunderstand God's silence. Some people seem to trade on God's silence. Oh, it's all right. What I'm doing is fine. Nobody to correct me, you see. All right. God seems to be silent for a while. But then what does he say? These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as yourself. But I will reprove you, and set them in order before your eyes. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. You see, God is a long-suffering God. So he keeps silent. He gives you a long rope. But then the judgment time comes, the payday comes. And then you see how God says, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Let us pray. Let us tell God, Lord, let me never take the wonder out of my wonderful Savior. Let me never take the wonder out of his wonderful word. And we want to see him demonstrated in our lives. 
hear our prayer and help us in Jesus holy name amen